as when the wind blows across the water. King Harvest is surely called. From the moment they emerged in the summer of 1968, the band, simply known as The Band, became one of the most influential and respected groups in the history of rock music. This seldom seen footage shot in 1970 is from the DVD that comes with the new box set, The Band, A Musical History. Packaged as a coffee table book, the set also contains five CDs worth of familiar recordings, demos, outtakes, and rarities. The project was overseen by the band's guitarist and chief songwriter, Robbie Robertson. I'm not big on retracing my footsteps and going into the past, but this, this was a joy. I'd never seen this music of the band laid out you know, just through every stage of the evolution of this music from the beginning right up through the last waltz. And for whatever reason, I think that I know. <laughs> you know, I think I know how the musical history of the band should be. I have a little bit of bias. I was involved in this, but I think the band, A Musical History, is truly the mother load of box sets for this kind of group. Grammy-winning pop music historian Rob Bowman wrote the extensive liner notes for the box set. I can't imagine how a box set could more comprehensively document um, the full career of any individual rock band or artist more than this has. The band, a musical history, traces the band back to the early 60s. In those days, they were a Toronto-based bar band known as the Hawks, backing up singer Ronnie Hawkins. Towards the end of 1965, Bob Dylan hired the Hawks for the first tour following his controversial move from acoustic folk music to electrified rock and roll. When I saw this possibility and everything, the musical journey, um, I thought, wow, I don't know anybody who's been down this path. Just when you think everything is what it is, something new would come along. Then we make our first record. And it's like, oh my God, not only were these guys there on the front lines of rock and roll in the beginning with Ronnie Hawkins, but then they're part of this thing with Bob Dylan, this musical revolution that changes the course of music forever. And then when we made our first album, it was like, oh my God, now they've gone and done this, and where does this come from, and where does this music? And this is nothing like what they did with Bob Dylan or uh, what they did with Ronnie Hawkins. The band's first album, Music from Big Pink, was named for the rented house in Woodstock, New York, where the members would gather in the basement and work on their musical ideas, often with Bob Dylan sitting in. The Big Pink house was like our clubhouse. Every day we would congregate. Most of the time we would work on music, but sometimes we would just be hanging out and talking about ideas and what was going on in the world and playing checkers and a little football. and. And in the course of doing something with such a low pressure atmosphere, changed everything for us. Music from Big Pink was this really interesting hybrid album of things coming from all over the place. But it wasn't like, okay, here's the blues song, here's the country song, here's the rock song. It was really all these influences being filtered together and being mixed up. And here is a new kind of music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Consciously, especially Robbie, who tended to be the guy with the sort of vision, they look around and they think, okay, you got all these guitarists playing these long, intense, high wire solos. Well, Robbie can do that. He'd done that with Ronnie Hawkins and Bob Dylan, but let's not do that. I thought, 
I've played a million guitar solos. Let's make this all about the songs and the texture and flavor of these songs and incorporating all of these influences, these beautiful influences that we've picked up along the side of the road in our journeys all these years and put all of those influences into this big pot of gumbo and mix it up in our own way. confusing to me at the beginning because people thought, what the hell is that? Where did this come from? The band's second self-titled album was even more successful than music from Big Pink. I can hear something calling on me And you know where I want to be Oh, really, don't you hear that sound? Before long, the band was on The Ed Sullivan Show and the cover of Time magazine but already the tensions that eventually pulled the group apart were starting to show. The fact that we had been together for a while before we became famous, uh, we thought that, okay, we're grounded. We're, you can't fool us with this kind of thing. We've been around, we've seen this guy, we've seen what happened to that guy and everything, and you just go right into that trap, you know, just because it's... It's so sticky in there, you get caught. Well, my brow is sweating and my mouth gets dry. The fancy people go drifting by. Where well, the moment of truth is right at hand. Just one more night that you could stand. We were so locked in together, you know, in our, uh, our first two albums. Then our third album, Stage Fright, things started to go like this. Now everybody could afford to have their own places and things, and people were getting married, moving off here, and so it wasn't quite locked in in the same kind of way anymore. Four years, no new songs. Between December 71 and January 74, they played three gigs over an eight-day period. They basically aren't working, and they've socially, emotionally, creatively, become disparate, isolated islands, uh, and not all of them are able to contribute as much as everyone else. But I want to emphasize that despite all this, they still made better music than 95% of any other band has ever existed throughout their whole career, even when they were barely speaking to each other. Pianist Richard Manuel and bassist Rick Danko are now deceased, and relations are strained between Robertson and the other two surviving members of the band, Lee Von Helm and Garth Hudson. Not surprisingly, compiling the box set was a bittersweet task. The whole journey was very emotional, especially, you know, in things from Rick and Richard, you know, who aren't with us anymore. Uh, I mean, there's some of their things that just were heartbreaking for me to, to hear. And some of them I'd forgotten about, some of these unreleased tracks. I didn't even remember that we had recorded and everything. So that was uplifting and exciting and at the same time really moving but all in all the experience was you know was good therapy